Shana, welcome to AGU TV. Hi, Laura. Nice to meet you. Tell us about Navteca and what the kind the kinds of work that you're doing and how this company came to be. Thanks. So we're a technology company. We're located just outside of Washington D.C. and we really look at technology tools for science, and that is cloud computing. It's high performance computing in the cloud. It's game engine technology for immersive data visualization, and it's also artificial intelligence. And game engine technology, this is, how does this work? What exactly is that? A lot of people think of it as virtual reality or augmented reality. The game engine is the underlying software that really powers video games. So when you think about all of those games are a virtual world, we really were interested in using that same technology, but for scientific and geospatial data visualization is a really different approach to visualization, being able to create a virtual world that's entirely data-driven and then be able to explore it. Sounds very futuristic, as does AI and VR and all of these other things. Um, what got you excited about these? Like, why did you want to get involved in these particular fields? I've always been very interested in the, that intersection of creativity, art, technology, science, and having a company is really the way to do that because nobody's telling you no, <laughs> the, the, the sky's the limit, so we have sort of unlimited possibilities in terms of taking emerging, te emerging technologies, experimenting with them, and then seeing if it's something that we can implement. And can you talk a little bit about how these innovations are helping scientists? Absolutely. So we do a lot of work with um, NASA and with some of the other federal scientific agencies here in the United States. And that could be working alongside their high performance computing teams, working alongside scientists to really help them to leverage cloud technology. Um, a lot of this is being really used to push the envelope for open science and building platforms that allow people from all over the world to be able to access not just NASA data, but also compute resources in the cloud. Um, that's one example. Also, of course, these innovative technologies with the game engines and with artificial intelligence can, are really changing the way that we can communicate about science. We can translate information into visual frameworks and also into conversational language that it can help people understand this complex information. And you're doing something with FIRE, if I am correct, in looking at the schedule. You're yeah. presenting later this week on how this information or how these technologies can be used to think about FIRE and the challenge that it poses with climate change. Yeah, so one of my hats, multiple hats that I wear is, is the principal investigator for a wildfire grant project. This is through um, NASA's Applied Sciences program. And we've been really looking at the game engine technology as a way to create an interactive framework. So bringing in lots of different types of data sets. We did a case study on the Hermit's Peak fire that occurred in New Mexico in 2022. So I'll be presenting this on Friday in an e-lightning session in the afternoon. So don't go home, stay. <laughs> Um, and we'll be showing that. And also, we've brought in the conversational AI piece with our own tool that we built called Voice Atlas. And it actually answers contextual questions about the visualization that you're looking at. So super I'm super cool. excited about it as sort of the next generation of how we can use these visualizations in an interactive way. Yeah. Um, you have also talked about how these technologies can be useful for um, you know, making science more inclusive and diverse and equitable. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so in a visualization platform like the one that we're developing, you can imagine you have stakeholders from lots of different backgrounds. They don't necessarily have to have a scientific or research background to be able to understand visually what's happening. Also people from the private sector, from utilities, from you know, state and local government and other decision-making bodies. It gives a common ground place where people can look at this. And then the conversational AI piece, I think, is really important as well because it really can make information more accessible. If you don't know what you're looking for in a data repository, if you don't know the right metadata tag, for example, the information might be there, but you couldn't find it. So the conversational AI piece can really help bridge that gap and make the information more accessible and more discoverable, which hits squarely on some of the open science goals that a lot of groups have. Yeah, and looking ahead into the future, even more in the future than this already feels, um, are there any technologies or innovations that you're anticipating? Everybody's talking about AI, so I think artificial intelligence definitely is going to be 
the big one, whether that's you know a general artificial intelligence that's baked into a lot of our devices that we interact with. Um, but I'm optimistic also that there's real possibility for it to help humans to overcome some of the challenges that we're facing, whether that's discovering cures for diseases or additional solutions to address climate change, that hopefully we can use this technology in a positive way to have uh, good outcomes for everybody. Shana Solis, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much.